like that. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and uh, begin with prayer this evening. Anybody have a prayer need you'd like for us to go to God in prayer about? It? Yes, Renee. I go to the doctor. I know everything's really going great, but I want to make sure you get this link off and keep driving me, brother. All right. Remember me. All right. Let's remember Sister Renee. Uh, going in Tuesday, she said, right? Yes. Sister Beverly. For Sister Beverly. Beverly on our mind here of late. God be with Beverly. Yes, B. God bless you, Beverly. Okay, all right. Sister Ann uh, Nichol Meyer.
for your purpose and for your plan. Lord, let that word of God that was preached this morning, God, take hold of our hearts, God, and direct our paths, Lord, and help us, Lord, to do our part, God, and to give you our best, Lord. God, to see, Lord, that the word of God prevails, Lord. And, Lord, we're just here for your purpose and for your plan here this evening. Uh, be with the, our pastor tonight, God, as he uh, teaches of the word, God, tonight, Lord, that you just help us, Lord, God, to receive everything, Lord, that we need tonight, Lord, to grow, Lord, God. It's, we're just so grateful to you, Lord. So grateful, Lord, for everyone that's come out, Lord. God, we just pray blessings upon them, Lord. And, God, we just pray, God, for that uh, nation of Israel, Lord, that you continue to uh, stand in their behalf, God, and help them, Lord, through the situations and the circumstances that are going on over there, God. We pray for that peace, Lord, for Jerusalem, Lord, God, for that people of Israel, Lord, God, right now. And, Lord, we pray for this country as well, Lord, God, that we'll find our way, God. And, Lord, God, turn to you, Lord, God, and repent of our sins, Lord, and give you the praise, the glory, and the honor for it. And we're just so grateful to you, God. We pray for those that are lost, those loved ones, God, that we care about that aren't where they need to be. God, we pray, Lord God, help them to see the light, Lord, and help us, Lord God, to let that light bright, uh, brightly shine in our lives, God, and Lord, to make a difference, Lord, and we just praise you and we thank you for it in your precious name. Amen. Amen. I go to the rock. Christ is all in right. 
shelter when I need a friend. I go to the rock. I go to the rock of my salvation. I go to the stone that the builders rejected. I run to the mountain and the mountain stands by me. The earth all around me is sinking sand. But on Christ the solid rock I stand. When I need a shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the rock. When I need a shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the rock. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand of praise this evening. may be small in number, but mighty is our God. Hallelujah. And he said, amen, where two or three are gathered together in my name. He said, I'll be right there in the middle of everything. Amen. It's going on. Amen. So there's more than enough of us, amen, to get the pot stirring for God. Hallelujah. And let the glory of God come down in this place tonight. Hallelujah. Oh, 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 oh. And his love for me 
has been real, for I can feel His holy power. Yeah. 
to the flame like I am right now. I know you're able and I know you can save through the fire with your mighty hand. But even if you don't, my heart is you alone. They say it only takes a little flame.
I feel the rain. Hallelujah. Well, hasn't it been a wonderful day out there today? Hallelujah. I've enjoyed this. <laughs> I feel the rain, rain, rain coming down, down, down. I feel blessing, blessings all around. It's that Holy Ghost and fire that I found. I feel the rain, rain, rain coming down. I feel the rain, rain, rain coming down, down, down. I feel blessing, blessings all around. It's that Holy Ghost and fire that I found. I feel the rain, rain, rain coming down. But I hear the thunder and I feel the wind. Lord, won't you send? Revival again. Is that a cloud up yonder in the sky? What's in that rain before we die? I feel the rain, rain, rain coming down, down, down. I feel blessing, blessings all around. All around. It's that Holy Ghost in fire that I found. I feel the rain, rain, rain coming down. But I hear the thunder and I feel the wind. Lord, won't you sin? Revival again. Is that a cloud up yonder in the sky? Lord, send that rain. Before we die, I feel the rain, rain, rain coming down, down, down. I feel blessing, blessings all around, all around. It's that Holy Ghost and fire that I found. I feel the rain, rain, rain coming down. I feel the rain, rain, rain coming down, down, down. I feel blessing. Blessings all around, well, all around. It's that Holy Ghost and fire that I found. I feel the rain, rain, rain coming down. I feel the rain, rain, rain coming down, down, down. I feel blessing, blessings all around, well, all around. It's that Holy Ghost and fire that I found. I feel the rain, rain, rain is coming down. I feel the rain, rain, rain coming down, down, down. I feel blessing, blessings all around, all around. It's that Holy Ghost and fire that I found. I feel the rain. Physical rain and yeah. spiritual rain. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's what you want us to do. Yes, sir. I appreciate that. Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate our musicians and our singers. I'll tell you what. Uh, you know, we need we need each other. I was Absolutely. thinking when we were taking, even when we were taking up prayer requests, I would hate to be a Christian alone. Good job. Without other people to, to uh, rub off on and for them to rub off on me and for us to do life together, it would be very lonely. But I'm thankful that if God puts people in your life to build you up and for you to build them up. Praise you. So I'm thankful for you. Look at your neighbor and just give them a high five and tell them, say, hey, I am so thankful for you. So thankful for you. Thankful for you. Thankful for you. you know, it's good, to, it's good to hang out with people like Mr. Don. It's just, uh, I, I really appreciate him coming. Hanging out and being with us and always his, his insights and his questions. And I'll tell you what, it's a good thing to be a part of a church that's on fire for God. Hey, we're going to continue our study. Hope you brought your pencil, your pen. We're going to be talking about the Feast of the Lord. We are on week number three on the Feast of the Lord. And so we want to make sure everybody gets one of these. Uh, you remember, let's just review while we're handing these out. There are seven feasts, correct? Seven feasts. You have the Feast of Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Uh, the Feast of First Fruits, the Feast of Pentecost, the Feast of Trumpets, the Feast of Atonement, and the Feast of Tabernacles. Amen. Remember in our study, when God gave specific dates, He told on this day of the month, do this, on this day of the month, do this. 
those were significant. Remember, they're significant. So uh, and we'll, we'll talk more about all of that. But I uh, just want to make sure everybody got to the paper. It's not going to take very long to go through this, but we are going to go through tonight, I believe, the most important feast that we could experience, hopefully. And uh, again, remember, uh, in order to understand these feasts, sometimes you have to take your American brain and set it to the side. Okay? The way that we were growing up, because we're not Jewish, and uh, we know that these feasts are, are Hebrew feasts, and so... The feasts aren't Jewish either, but they were instilled into Moses and them, and so they have that Jewish mindset. And again, we talked about the, the days uh, beginning on the evening and ending on the evening. So uh, all of those are important, and we'll talk some more about that. But let's read this first verse, Leviticus 23, 1 through 3. We read this for the last, uh, it'll be three weeks now. This is what it said. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the people of Israel and say to them, these are the appointed feast. Do you remember what the word appointed feast is? It's moed. Do you remember what it means? It means set times. Set times. In other words, an appointment. Okay? If you call to go get your oil changed or if you call to get a doctor's visit, they don't say, hey, well, you just come sometime next Thursday. That'll be great. Right? They usually set an appointment. Especially if you go to a doctor nowadays, they want you to set an appointment. But you set an appointment, they expect you to show up then, right? And uh, you're expect you expect to go there and them to say, "Well, I'm sorry, we didn't know you were coming. You weren't coming, or you, you were here." So we set appointments for different things, but these are set feasts, and they're basically they're set appointments that God has for us. Okay, That's what it means. So let's keep on reading. So they're set appointed feasts of the Lord that you shall proclaim as holy convocation. Somebody tell me what convocations mean. Dress rehearsal. Dress rehearsal, Dress rehearsal. right? Dress rehearsal. Yep. Dress rehearsal. That's important. They are my appointed feast. Six days shall work be done, but on the seventh day is the Sabbath of solemn rest. A holy convocation, you shall do no work. It is the Sabbath to the Lord in all of your dwelling places. So you have dress rehearsals. Each one of these feasts was a dress rehearsal. Remember, in the Old Testament, as they're going through these feasts, again, like the Passover, they're killing the Passover lamb, they're going through this whole process, in the future God sees his son on the cross, right? Right. On that very same day, he fulfilled that. He was put into the grave on the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and of course, then according to Leviticus, on the, th the day after the uh, Sabbath, they were to wave the first fruits, that's the day that Jesus rose and he was our first fruit, yes, right? Right. He was the first one to raise from the dead and be conquered, uh, to conquer death. So that's important. So let's talk about this. Number one, we're going to talk tonight about the Feast of Trumpets. The Feast of Trumpets. In Leviticus 23, 23 through 25, this is what it says. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the people of Israel, saying, In the seventh month. Okay? In the seventh month. So the, the Passover... And the Feast of Unleavened Bread and the Feast of First Fruits were in the first month. Now yeah. God says in the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall observe a day of solemn rest, a memorial proclaimed with blast of trumpets, a holy convocation. Again, this is a dress rehearsal. You shall not do any ordinary work, and you shall present a food offering to the Lord. So number two here. The Feast of Trumpets is also called Rosh Hashanah. Okay, that's the Hebrew word, Rosh Hashanah. And this is what it means. It means the head of the year. Okay, the head of the year. I want you to understand something. We read in the last couple of weeks that we have Nisan, which is the first month. In the Old Testament, God told them that Nisan was the first month of the year. Okay, but here we have... The Rosh Hashanah means the head of the year. So what's the difference? We're talking about seven-month difference. You can kind of, the way that the, the Hebrew calendar works is you can kind of see it as uh, a great example is in January 1st is our New Year's, right? Right. Yes. But according to the government, if you work at, were a government employee, they begin their year in October. Okay, October 1st is their beginning of their year when it comes to all of their financial and all of their business. Okay, they set their budget and all that kind of stuff in October. Okay, so when Rosh Hashanah means head of the year, it's the head of the business side of the Hebrew, how they operate. Okay, 
It's the head of that. And so it was a new beginning for them when it came for all of their business stuff, all of their uh, appointments and everything. It was something, it was a fresh start was what it was, okay? Praise the Lord. Here's the note. Rosh Hashanah begins the day of, uh, the 10 days between the Jewish New Year and Yom Kippur. And we'll talk about that next week. Jews, consider this day the beginning of the high holy days for Jews. It is when Jews take a deep look into their lives and evaluate their relationship with God. These are big, important days for Jewish people. Okay? It begins with Rosh Hashanah, and it goes through 10 days to Yom Kippur. They consider these days the most important days. The reason why is because they're wanting to make a, a big reset. They, they, uh, they observe, they uh, check their hearts, they make sure everything's good inside of their heart. And so they also believe that it was the day that God created Adam and Eve. Hmm. Okay? They believe that it's an important day. They also believe it's the day that Noah went into the ark. And so uh, it's the head of the year. Okay? Oh. So here's the thing. Rosh Hashanah has many alternate names. And this is where it gets very interesting. It has many different alternate names. And then your blank next to that is idioms and idioms. Does anybody know what an idiom is? Like Nobody look at James right now, okay? Everybody eyes on me, though. Does anybody know what an idiom means? Like a story, maybe? No. Have you ever heard the term, it's raining cats and dogs? Yeah, it's something about Mitty. Yeah, if you, now if we said, hey, it's raining cats and dogs outside, we're not going to go outside and see a bunch of cats and dogs in the street <laughs> because they fell, unless a tornado happened, maybe, but uh, other than that, right? But that's an idiom, is when it, we say it's raining cats and dogs, that's an idiom. We know what that means, right? Because we're American. If we went to some other uh, different country and we said, hey, it's raining cats and dogs outside, they would probably think we're weird. <laughs> probably so, right? Uh, you, can, you can pick up idioms all over the place. For example, if you go to Wisconsin and you ask them, you're thirsty, and you say, where is your water fountain? They will say, it's outside in the park. I've asked that question before. I was like, where's your water fountain? They're like, it's outside. I'm like, why do you have a water fountain outside? And they said, oh, the bubbler. A bub oh, like a drinking fountain, a bubbler. And I'm like, a bubbler? What are you talking about? But that's an idiom for them, okay? When we went to South Africa, we were traveling around. They called the traffic lights robots. Oh. They get mad at the robots because it won't turn green on them, you know? So there's all kinds of idioms. But the Feast of Trumpets has many names, and it has many idioms, okay? And I want to explain those idioms to you tonight, and hopefully that will shed some light about what this feast is all about. Spirit, There's number three. Oh, hello, hello. Yes. Spell it, spell it, idiom. I-D, I-O-M-S. I-D. I-D, I-O-M-S. Thank you. Here's number three. Over nine different sessions, the priest would blow the trumpet 11 times. Okay? So during the Feast of Trumpets, there was 99 soundings of the shofar. So from the beginning of the day, they would blow it a total of 99 times, okay? And it was a, it was a setup for, for what's about to happen. And so they, it was a reminder. Remember, in the Old Testament, the, the uh, trumpet blowing meant different things, right? It meant yes. a call to war, right. a call to congregate, right. a call to disperse, right. all kinds of meanings. These 99 shofar blowings was a, was a reminder Better get things right. Better make things right. Amen. Clear your heart. Okay? Right. Clear your mind. Make sure everything's good. Okay? It's important to them. That's why they're high holy days. Okay? So, here's the deal. 99 total trumpet blasts, and then there's one left. What would happen is this. And I'll talk about this a little bit at the end, so let me just let me go here. On A, the last trumpet is the hundredth blast. Okay? They'd have 90, uh, nine sessions of 11 trumpet blasts, and then at the end, they would blow the last trumpet. Now, the 99 were a certain tone, and the last trumpet was the 100th blast. It was the longest and the loudest. Okay? That's on the, on the section uh, A there. It was the longest yeah, yeah. and the loudest. They consider it the final trumpet. On B, on number three, the final trumpet of the Feast of Trumpets, uh, this is what Paul is describing, okay? And let's read this about the rapture. First Corinthians 15, it says, Behold, I tell you a mystery. 
we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be what? Changed. We're all going to be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Amen. Again, if you are a Jewish person, and you hear Paul say at the last trumpet, they will automatically assume that you're talking about the Feast of Trumpets. Because that was the name, the last trumpet. They would blow the last, longest, loudest shofar blowing, and it was meant to wake you up, okay? So, here we go, number four. Also related to blowing the shofar, Rosh Hashanah is sometimes known by the name Yom Kippur. Okay, that is spelled Y-O-M, and Kippur is spelled K-I-P-P-U-R. Did I say Kippur? I'm sorry, Yom Teruah. Let me give you a new spelling here. Okay. Yom Kippur is next. the next one. Yom Teruah is T-E-R-A-H. I apologize. Yom Teruah. T-E-R-A-H. Or T-E-R-U-A-H. Teruah. Teruah. Yeah. Okay. And on A, after Yom Teruah on A, it is the day of shouting or blasting. Okay, the day of shouting or blasting. I put this in the notes here on B, and I want you to understand something. When the trumpet of the rapture happens, okay, when the trumpet sounds during the rapture, it's not just a noise to get our attention. It is a long, powerful blast to wake up the dead. Hmm. It's not just for us, right? It's for those that are asleep right now, right? Yeah. It's going to be so loud that it's going to blow, the, it's, going to, it's going to wake them up, yeah. according to what the Bible says, okay? Right. Right. Praise the Lord. So let's read this. Let's talk about the rapture, and I want, to, I want to bring it back around to why, and this is my personal belief, and I don't want, please don't take me wrong, but I believe Jesus fulfilled the first four feasts, according with the Holy Spirit, on, on this Feast of Pentecost. There are three feasts left. Let me explain this. The first four feasts are in the, in the springtime. We talked about right, it, right? Right. Uh, the Feast of Pentecost is about the spring harvest. The Feast of Trumpets is about the fall harvest. Mm -hmm. There's three more feasts left. I believe, okay, please don't get me wrong, but I believe that it is a very good chance that there is a rapture window during the Feast of Trumpets. And I'll explain that here in a minute, okay? Because we've heard before that nobody, you know, we, we don't set dates. And I understand that. We do not set dates. But according to the word of God, it is very possible that the rapture will happen during the Feast of Trumpets. And I'll explain why. And we can explain that. And we can answer some questions, too. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians 4.16. It's on your paper there. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up and raptured together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Amen. Aren't you thankful for that? Amen. We will always be with the Lord after the rapture. Yes. So why is it that it's possible that the rapture could happen on the Feast of Trumpets? Let me explain. Let's go through these papers. Other names for the Feast of Trumpets. Now, according to Jewish people, this is what they call the Feast of Trumpets. They call it Yom Teruah, okay? They call it Yom Hadin. That, that is Y-O-M-H-A-D-I-N. Yom Hadin. And it is a reference to the Day of Judgment. They believe on the Feast of Trumpets that the Day of Judgment comes. Okay? And here's the note. The Jewish prayers during this feast emphasize it as a time during which the world is judged or put on trial. In Hebrew, din means judgment. The Jews believe Rosh Hashanah represents a period during which God weighs our rights and our wrongs from the previous year. Again, that is why during the 99 trumpet blasts, they're saying, hey, you better make things right, correct everything, because they believe on that last trump, on that day, 
that God will judge the previous year. Okay? That's what their beliefs are. Okay? So here's B. The day and the hour that no one knows. Have you ever heard that term before? That's right. Matthew 24, 36 says, But of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels, but my Father only. This is Jesus talking to his disciples. So what does that mean, the day and the hour that no man knows? That is a Jewish idiom. This is why the, the uh, Feast of Trumpets is over a two-day period. Their job is to have two watchers at the temple base, and they look for the new moon. Okay? They look for the new moon, which is the, just a small crescent. When they can see the light of the new moon, that is when they blow the last trumpet, okay? So from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. throughout that whole day, they're blowing 99 blasts, and then they wait until the very last one until they can see that moon. Mm. When they see that moon, they confirm it, and then they blow the last trumpet. Right. Here's the deal. According to Jewish customs, God told them that in the event it's cloudy, go to the next day, okay? Uh -huh. If they can't, if the two watchmen can't see it for some reason, they are to move and start their year on the, ne uh, the, the uh, new year on the next day, okay? So it's over a two-day period. That is why the Jewish people call it the day and the hour that no man knows, because they don't know when they're going to see the moon, the new moon. They know it's going to happen. They just don't know which day it's going to be. Does that make sense? And so it's over a two-day period, okay? So that's what that means. On C, on your paper, it's also called the long day, because it's considered one day and two. They consider it to be a long day. Their job on that day is to not do any work, to rest, and to look up to try to see if they can see the, the uh, sighting of the new moon. Why is that? Because we said before, the Hebrew calendar is based on the lunar cycle. Okay? So that's what they're looking for. They didn't have technology back then where they could just pull it up on their iPhone or their Android phones or their computer and know exactly when stuff was going to happen. They expected people to look and to, to observe and to confirm that they could see the new moon. Here's the note. This is the one reason this Feast of Trumpets actually spans two days on the calendar. It has everything to do with the new moon. The ancient Jewish calendar was a lunar calendar based on the cycles of the moon. Back before people understood the movements of the planets and the cycles of the solar system, all the other Jewish holidays were timed to occur on the full moon, okay, when they could see the moon at its brightest. But Rosh Hashanah fell during the new moon, and it was the first of the month at the beginning of a new year. Okay? Does that make sense? Any questions about that? How many, how many days is in the Jewish calendar? How many days? Yeah, you know. We 360 have days. Yep, so they had uh, 13 months of uh, 28 days. Is what they had, so. so let's let's continue. On D, they, can, they call the Feast of Trumpets the wedding day of the Messiah. Okay, the wedding day of the Messiah. Why is that? Well, from what my word of God tells me is that according to Revelation and other places that when Jesus comes, there's going to be a seven-year feast, right? A wedding feast, right? Now, that is, we talked about this a little bit this morning about how when the bride, she would baptize herself, she would immerse herself in water as a sign that she was leaving her old life, right, and going to the new one. Right. Here's another Jewish reference to a wedding because a wedding and a Jewish, uh, a Jewish wedding for seven days, okay, after the wedding day, for seven days, they would celebrate they would celebrate. They would sing songs and do all kinds of stuff. They would celebrate. Well, when Jesus comes for seven years as the bride of Christ, we're going to celebrate with him. Okay? Does that make sense? So they consider this the wedding day of the Messiah. Okay? So here's the next one. E. They call this day, and this is an idiom, it's the thief in the night. Have you ever heard that term? Yes. What does that mean? What is God saying when he talks about the thief in the night? Huh? When you least expect it. Okay? So, there is a term, thief in the night. To Jewish people, this is what it means. In the Old Testament, when they had the temple, they would guard the temple. Okay? They would have different people guard the temple. Some people got the graveyard shift. Right? They had overnight. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. You like the graveyard? Anybody ever worked the graveyard shift? Yeah. I used to work the graveyard shift in air traffic control, and I'm telling you, it's sometimes it's brutal, right? Brutal. You you had a couple together because we had shift, uh, we had uh, rotating shifts. So like, I'd start in the afternoon on Monday, and Tuesday would start scooting up until Friday was basically 10:30 till 6:30 at night. And so never never did I have a normal day of, of like. Uh, whatever, 10 to 6 o'clock in the morning <laughs> sleep. Right. They're no fun, right? Oh, no. But it, it's the same thing in the Jewish, uh, in the Old Testament, what you had is you had people that were guarding the temple grounds, okay? But sometimes these guys would fall asleep. Yeah. They'd fall asleep. They'd get hot in the summer, right, in the desert, and they'd take their cloak off, and they'd just be basically there asleep. And the high priest, or one of the high priest people that was a part of that whole process would go around, Checking. and if he saw that you Checking. were asleep, he would do one of two things. He'd either take your cloak, mm -hmm. or he would set your cloak on fire if you were, if you were wearing it, as a way to wake you up, okay? Now, can you imagine falling asleep when you're smelling no fumes or smelling smoke, you know? And thinking, Man. Right? It's like a cartoon kind of stuff to me. So they call that day, or they call that whole process a thief in the night. Because if you were asleep, you, was not a watcher. you weren't watching, right? You yeah, weren't paying you attention. Watcher, right. So they call that a thief in the night, right? That's what that means. Let's read these verses real quick, and then we're going to talk some more about it. Matthew 24, 43. But know this, that if the master of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would have not... Uh, would not have let his house be broken into. Yeah. Don't True you know word. that? If True you get a letter from a or an email or a text message from a thief saying, "Hey, I really like your house," yeah. you're probably going to be coming around one o'clock a.m. Yeah. Just to check it out. If you don't mind to leave the door open, how many of you guys know somebody would have a gun, yeah. right? Yeah. Or you just be right. You're not going to be asleep thinking, "Oh, that's not going to happen." Right. Set a trap. Yeah. And that's what this is saying. The people who are not aware of what's going on. It's like they're asleep, right? Mm -hmm. It's like they're asleep. Okay, so let's read the other one. First Thessalonians 5 2. For you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord, okay, will come like a thief in the night. Who was the thief in the night? It was the person that went to uh, around the temple grounds mm -hmm. looking for people that were asleep. Mm -hmm. What happened when that person came up to somebody who was awake? Mm -hmm. Nothing, right? Nothing. They knew that they were coming. That makes sense. They knew. I mean, they were awake. They were watching. They were waiting for it to happen, right? Mm -hmm. And so they had their clothes. They were paying attention to what was going on. That's what he's saying. Okay, Revelation sixteen fifteen. Behold, I am coming like a thief. Blessed is the one who stays what? Awake. 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 Blessed is the one who stays awake, keeping his garments on. Again, that's like taking the cloak off, that he may not go about naked and be seen exposed. Did you know, real quick, just as an answer, Revelation is such an important book. Did you know it's the only book in the Bible that says you are blessed if you read it? Amen. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? Yes. That you are blessed if you read it. And I know Revelation gets all kinds of crazy sometimes. There's a lot of questions that we can have about Revelation. But here's the fact. Jesus said, I'm coming back like a thief in the night to a Jewish person. They would have, it would have reminded them about how the, the, uh, the Old Testament worked with the temple grounds. And so it was a reminder. Jesus is saying, for people who are asleep, they're not going to know what's happening. That's right. Okay? right. Absolutely. But for right. people who are awake, they're yes. going to know what's happening. Yeah. So how right. is this related to the rapture? Okay? How does this relate? We have a day in the hour that no man knows. Mm -hmm. We have a thief in the night. We have the wedding day of the Messiah. We have the long day. They didn't know which day it was going to happen. Mm -hmm. But the key point here is the last trump. Mm -hmm. Okay? Paul said, at the last trump, the dead in Christ will rise. Okay? Again, he is talking to people who understand how the feast operates. Okay? We as Americans sometimes, and it's not a bad thing, we don't understand how this stuff operates sometimes. We don't, we, I mean, for years, I didn't know that Jesus died on the day of Passover at the exact same time that they were doing all that process, right? I didn't know that. I didn't know that he rose on the feast of first fruits, but he did. So Jewish people, they understand that. They, they see all this happening. So let me give you one more verse. Go to actually several verses, but go to First Thessalonians, chapter four. First Thessalonians, chapter four. 
This is what I believe while you're turning there. Feast of Trumpets is rapture. The Feast of Atonement, which is the next one, 10 days later, is the second coming of Christ. And the Feast of, the feast of Tabernacles is when we will be tabernacled with God, when he will stay with us for all eternity. And we'll get into those next week, okay, the last two. But let's talk about the Feast of Trumpets. For years I have been told, and please don't get me wrong, because I know people, and I've seen people on, on YouTube and on, in, in websites saying, hey, God is going to come back May 21st, 2025. Right? Mm -hmm. That's not the way God operates. Right? No, no. And they're going to be shown that. as foolish. Right? right. Yeah. But God does say we know the season, right? We can recognize the season. Mm -hmm. And so to me, to point a date and saying it's very possible that on the Feast of Trumpets there is this window of a rapture. Does that mean he's not going to come then? I don't know. But I'm just telling you what the Jewish people see. Okay? And what these Feast of Trumpets mean to them. That there's a possibility uh, that there's a two day window. That Christ will come back. It does make sense to me. Okay, this is a fall feast. It happens in uh, September, October, depending on what their calendar looks like. Remember, their calendar and our calendar is a little bit different. Okay, mm -hmm. Jackie, will you do me a favor? Will you look up and see when the Feast of Trumpets is this year? I've got another question for you. Okay, I maybe have an answer. I'll do my best. <laughs> uh, if that's so and that happens, would that be about the first three and a half years? About the first three and a half years? Yeah. Well, well this is what's interesting to me. I was fixing to go there, too, so I'm glad you so, said that. Um, some people, okay, let's not get technical here, but some people believe in pre-trib, right? Pre-tribulation. The rapture will be happening before the tribulation. Yeah. I know some people that ha they, they say it's going to happen mid. I know some people that say it's going to happen after. Here's my deal. As long as your heart's right, no your heart is right. Don't matter right? what time. It doesn't matter. We know that Harpezos is in the Bible, which right. means rapture. We know that in Revelation, after Revelation, I believe, chapter 4, that the church is no longer mentioned until right. Jesus comes back again. There's a lot of things pointing to different directions, okay? I believe it's pre-tribulation. I believe that we are caught up, okay? And that we are taken out before judgment begins. To, but that's my personal opinion. That's after years of studying. you got to find out for yourself, right? Yes. It's not my job to convince you of something. It's my job just to share with you. What, what I believe that the Lord says, and so you have to make up your own decision. When does it say? Okay, October 3rd this year. Okay, last year it was September 24th, I believe. Mm -hmm. So remember, it's not a set. It's it's going based on the Jewish calendar. This is what's interesting to me too, though. Let me just share a couple things, then we'll read this with uh, these verses. If it is a pre-trib rapture. The Bible says for three and a half years there's going to be peace, right? Right. And then the abomination of desolation happens. Right. Okay? That happens in the temple or in the temple. It, it might not be a building temple, but it happens in Israel. The Antichrist comes in, declares himself as God, right? Right. And then after that, we have three and a half years of crazy. Right. Of judgment. Mm -hmm. Remember, if you read in Revelation, there's 1,230 days and then there's 1,260 days. How does that calculate? We talked to the first week about how every 7th, 9th, 11th, 17th year, they add an extra month, right? Right. So it's very possible that the first 1,230 days and then the last 1,260 days, there's one extra month inside of that. This is what's interesting. Please pay attention. Three and a half years. If the rapture happens in the fall, that means three and a half years later, it's the springtime, okay? Okay. That's very possible. It would set the abomination of desolation on the Feast of Passover when they're doing the sacrifices. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm. Because he steps in and stops the daily sacrifices, yeah. what the Bible says, right? Mm -hmm. Declares himself as God. So there's a lot of things that points that, that there is a, 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 a rapture window is what I'm trying to say. So to answer your question, I believe it's before the, three and a half, before the, the Antichrist is ever revealed, okay? And uh, we can talk about that if you have some more questions about that. But that stuff's interesting to me. Mm -hmm. It's all interesting mm -hmm. to me. And again, please listen to me. There is no way that we can explain the feast extremely well on a Sunday night for a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. It takes years. I mean, it takes a lot. of. And I can give you some references, some YouTube videos of people. Uh, there's a gentleman by the name of Mark Biltz. I don't know if you ever heard of him or not. He is a... Uh, what would you call him? A he's a Jew, but he's a Messianic Jew. Yeah, he's not an Orthodox. Do you know the difference between an Orthodox and a Messianic Jew? Mm -hmm. Messianic Jew has accepted Christ 
They know that Christ is the Messiah. Orthodox Jew are still waiting. They don't think that Jesus was the Messiah. Okay, there's a difference. But he has a, an extremely good study on on the feast, and so uh, some of the information I've taken has been from him because he does such a good job. So let's read these verses real quick. First Thessalonians four. This is very familiar with you, and we're going to start at verse number thirteen. This is what it says. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no what? Hope. hope. We talked about hope tonight, right? Mm -hmm. yes. People that have no hope. He's saying, I don't want you to be concerned and have sorrow like people that have no hope. Okay? For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring him, uh, bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. What does that mean? Well, the dead Christ rise first, yeah, right? And he starts well, explaining that. that. Okay, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first, right? Right. right. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up. What is that word caught up? That word, it's translated as ar harpezos, which means in our English translation, rapture. rapture. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, and there's other places it's found as well in Revelation. So, we will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words, period, stop it, we're done, right? Right. Chapter right. 4 is over with. But the Bible wasn't created with chapters and verses. Mm -hmm. This is a letter. It's just one long letter. Yeah. And so we'll read that and we'll stop and we'll think, well, hey, we know that he's gonna, we're going to be caught up and, and we're going to meet him in the air. But let's go to chapter 5 because they would have continued to read. But concerning, everybody say concerning. Concerning. Okay, concerning what? The times and the seasons. Jesus. In other words, the times and the appointed the appointed times and basically dress rehearsal is what he said. Concerning these things, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourself know perfectly that the day of the Lord shall come as a thief in the night, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman. And they shall not escape. But you, everybody say you. Yeah. you. Who's he talking to? Us. He's talking to us. 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 Uns. Uns, right. <laughs> That's Arkansas, Uns. right? Yeah. Yes. Uns. But, but seriously, he says, okay, so it's going to be it's gonna be like a thief in the night, like a labor pains. We don't, you know, you don't know the exact time when you're going to give birth, right? But he's saying, but you, okay, let's read. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. <laughs> You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, as a helmet of hope of salvation, for God did not appoint us to wrath, but obtain salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ, who died, verse 10, for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another, just as you are also doing. Amen. So what does he say? Amen. He's saying for people that don't know about this stuff. For right. people that are in darkness, they don't know they don't it's know. going to be like a thief in the night. Correct. Right? They don't understand what's going on. They don't know when it's going to happen. It's going to be like birth pains. But then he turns around and says, but to you, brethren, who are in the light, it's not going to be a surprise. No worries. Right? It's not going to be a surprise. Mm -hmm. It's not going to overtake you. No. And then he tells us to comfort each other because we know it's going to happen. Yes. We don't know what year it's going to happen. Right. Okay? But we know it's going to happen. I believe, now, if it doesn't happen on the Feast of Trumpets, that's fine. But I believe that according to the feast that we have been studying for the last couple weeks, Jesus fulfilled each one of those on those specific days. And it's very possible that he will fulfill the next feast as the rapture of the church. Glory okay? to God. That's exciting to me. Yes. This is interesting to me. Let's talk, let's talk about our times that we live in. 
Do you guys remember Y2K? Oh, yeah. Everybody say God is coming back. Yeah. Right. yeah. You better, I mean, you better be ready, right? Yeah. And it came and went, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's so many things. I mean, I remember talking to my dad when Hitler came in power, right? Oh, yeah. He began to look and see that Israel was being, was being, uh, they were being tormented, and they were, yeah, there was just so much going on. There's so many things that we could point to, but this is what's interesting to me. Last year, I don't know if you've heard of this or not. You might want to do some study on your own, but the United Nations put together what they called Agenda 2030. You ever heard of that? Mm -mm, no. You should look it up. Agenda on their page, it's Agenda 2030. They have a, they have desires. Okay, they they wanted, they started this in 2018, and they ask for uh, countries to sign on and to make a commitment that they would become UN Agenda 2030 compliant by the year 2030. Okay, now, throwing this out here, just listen to me. This is interesting to me. So, pandemic happened in 2019, 2020, right? Last year. In September, they had a meeting on the Feast of Trumpets, as a matter of fact. Okay? And what they are doing is they have asked all nations to reconfirm their commitment to Agenda 2030. They say, we have seven years left to make this happen. Okay? And we want to make this happen. The first nation to sign on that we will commit to that was Israel. Wow. Interesting to me that they were the first yeah. one to sign on. They, they already <laughs> If you look at their website and all of their stuff, the, the title for their meeting that they had uh, last year and the big push that they're having this year is peace and safety. <coughs> That's what they're pushing, peace Praise and safety. Well, I'm not saying it happens well. this year or next year or whatever, <laughs> but well. you can tell by worldly events that they are pushing. You guys know this, right? We don't have to sit down here and debate this stuff. You know that they're pushing for stuff. They're pushing for all kinds of crazy stuff, right? They want to track people. Yep. They, I, mean, I mean, we can get all we can go down the rabbit hole, right? Yeah. Nope. Jesus said this stuff was going to happen, right? right? He said it was going to happen. Word is true. Uh, it, yes, absolutely. His word is true. So I'm just saying this. It's interesting that the Feast of Trumpets is possibly a window for the rapture for 2030. They want all this stuff done by 2030. And you should, I'll, I'll tell you what, next week I will print you out the sheet of what all, all they want to do for Agenda 2030. Okay. If it says one world government, so that, that's what it screams the loudest. Mm -hmm. That is their desire. They want to use uh, health as a way of doing that through through uh, controlling pandemics and all that kind of stuff through vaccinations. They want to make sure uh, they want to make sure. And we saw this a little bit during COVID, but they want to make sure that you can't travel unless you have a vaccine passport. Okay, whatever you think about vaccines, that's fine. But here's the point: it is a push to making sure that they can control every part of your life. Yeah, oh my goodness, that's what they want to do. Come on, that's what they want to do. And so it's interesting. Now, all of this stuff kind of, I mean, it just, it, to me, it's just, it's kind of like icing on the cake or just, it's great information because they're saying it so loudly. And for people who are in the light, who recognize, you know, what these feasts are and how, the, how God promised that, you know, through the book of Revelation and when Jesus is talking about in Matthew, we can see the writing on the wall that he's coming soon. We can see it, right? And he's going to be coming soon. This is what's fun, though. He said in the last days that he would pour out his spirit. That's right. That's it in the he said that in the last days that he's going to, I mean, people are going to be turning their hearts back to God. We are starting to see that. Oh, we yeah. talked about it, I believe, Wednesday when we are talking about the fastest growing Christian nation. Or pri let's say this, Christian faith is growing fastest in Iran right now. Mm -hmm. In the Muslim nations. Right, it's growing all over the world like wildfire. And we're starting to see sprouts of it come back up in America, right? Through different revivals and stuff. And it seems like they're being put out. But there is this desire. And I believe God is beginning to turn people back toward him. Hallelujah. Why? Amen. Because he's ready. He's ready to come back. I'm ready for him to come back, aren't you? Amen. I'm so ready for him to come back.
there's a push. You guys know this as well as I do. But there is such an agenda that Satan, the world has, and you can start to see uh, the persecutions of Christians in America. Oh yeah. Of course, we see the persecutions of Jews right now. I read today on my way. Uh, I was listening on my way up to the airport today that. Uh, Jews are asked not to go to Cambridge University anymore because of all the hatred yeah. that's going on right now. Yeah. There's so much stuff going on. And what are these? These are birth pains, right? Right. Things are happening at a quick pace. At a really quick pace. Quick. But listen, I, I come to tell you this this evening that we are not in darkness. We are children of light. Amen. And it's not going to be bright. It's not going to be surprised us, right? Amen. When your neighbor gets nervous and they start talking about all this stuff going on, we are in life. We can comfort one another right. because we know that this know. stuff is going to happen, right? Absolutely. We know it's going to happen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. And again, we're not setting dates. We're not saying that. But I'm telling you, according to how the beast have all been operated, Jesus fulfilled the first four. There's three more left. I yeah. believe that he's going to fulfill. I don't think he'd fulfill four and then not do three. They're, uh, they're convocations, they're dress rehearsals for things that are going to happen in future events. And so we need to keep our eyes open. And we need to make sure that whatever we do, we are light to darkness, right? right, right. Praise the Lord. To bring as many people into the fold as we can because Amen. we are light to darkness and everyone deserves salvation. Oh, yeah. Right. Right. They got to oh, yeah. make their choice, right? But they deserve to hear the truth. Right. Yes. And we can be that, that church that, that leads people into truth. There are so many churches, you guys know as well, and I'm not trying to down churches, but there are so many churches that are getting caught up in programs and all kinds of stuff oh, yeah. and right. missing the truth. Right. Oh yeah. Right. And they're trying to tickle people's ears to, yes. to see if they can come and be a part. Listen, I just want to tell you the truth, right? Praise the Lord. I wouldn't want to do that Thank to my girls and tell them of, of a world that's not real and then have them exit our home when they turn 18 or whatever and say, what in the world is going on? My Lord. Jordan Peterson said you should show your kids the worst of the world so they know how to overcome it. That's right. Amen. Amen. We should tell people the truth about who God is, about how he operates, about his expectations, about his freedom that he offers and the salvation that he, he offers so people can make a decision and they don't feel it. So, Thank is there any Lord. questions about the peace? I know it's a lot. I, I know it. There's a lot of stuff to it, and I want to tickle your ear to, to try to find information out on your own as well. Amen. Is there any questions that I can answer, maybe, that you have that's like immediate right on your mind? Okay. If you ever have questions, please ask. I'm telling you, the first time I heard this, I had a lot of questions. I began to ask a lot of different people. Mm -hmm. well, it's interesting were, studies. You were talking about the dead. I can't pronounce it. For the hand of Christ, come again and put up the temple and Right, the abomination of desolation. Okay, I I heard uh, it was a tape or something I was listening to. Uh, somebody asked over at Friendly when that was going to happen, and the preacher said, "Well, I don't really know." So I got to listening, and uh, it said in there, and I don't remember exactly where, because the way mine read, it just reads it. They don't give a whole lot, it's just the Bible, and don't break it down in chapters or verses. But it said that. The, uh, statue that he'll make will be the, he'll look like the one that had the, the death scar on him, mm -hmm. the one that uh, was alive after he was killed. Right. Uh, and they're saying, they say, when you see that, you don't know you it's time. Hmm. I'm sure you're talking, we're talking about the Antichrist. The Bible says the Antichrist will be struck in the head and he'll be covered, right? Mm -hmm. And that's how he'll wow people. Here's what's funny, and again, I'm not trying to keep you long, I just want to give you some information. The Bible also says that there are ten nations, right, that, that join up with the Antichrist. But it also says, according to the Bible, that there are ten nations that fight against the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. Who knows? It's possible but that America could be the nation of light that fights against the Antichrist. I'm just yes. saying. It may not happen. I don't know. We don't know future events. But what, what's most important is that you make sure your heart right with God. And that you make sure you're light to people. Praise the Lord. Right? Just That's be right. right. Be Amen. light to people. Amen. So... If there's any questions, though, please ask. I, I want to give you as much information as I can. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the feast so far. Yeah. Next week, we're going to talk about the last two feasts, okay? And uh, and then we'll, we'll wrap it up next week. So two more left. Would you stand with me? Is there any prayer requests, anything we can pray with anybody? I know we took them early. Does anybody need prayer right now? Would you lift your hand if you need prayer for anything? We just want to pray for you. We love you. Thank you so much for supporting the church. Thank you so much for for coming and being here and uh
come to what we are honored to be here as well. So I hope you enjoyed this tonight. Keep your eyes up, right? Children in white. Look at your neighbor and say, look up. Look up. Jesus, we thank you for your presence, God. We are honored to be a part of your children. We're honored to be a part of your family, Lord. We thank you for the, the salvation that you came for us. We love you, Jesus. We love you. We ask that you would help us be light to darkness, God. Give us boldness. Let your Holy Spirit go before us to water the, the ground that when we drop the seed in, it begins to grow. God, we ask that you would help us unite us with love for one another in this room that we would love and forgive and let go and move on, Lord, if there's any issues, God, that we could unite or people know that we are a church that is under your headship. And we thank you for this, Lord. Give us favor. Give us safety as we leave this week. We thank you, God, for all that you've done. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Amen. We'll see you Wednesday night. Thank you so much for coming tonight.